Well, to begin, I guess I just want to start by apologizing to everyone here tonight. I know how frustrating it can be to have to sit through all these speeches when really you just want to get your diploma and call it a night. So I guess where I'm going with all of this is I'll just try to get straight to the point, especially for you who are already starting to start uh, zoning out. Really, I just have three questions. Question one, what is the purpose of life? Question two, what is the secret to life? And question three, what is the most important thing in life? Now, these are the same three questions my dad asked me when I was five. Of course, my answer to all of them were, oh, I don't know. That's when my dad told me, there is no purpose to life. The secret is y equals f of x, and the most important thing is to love and to be loved. Maybe one day you'll understand what I'm telling you. Now, I had no clue what he was talking about, and quite honestly, I didn't care, mainly because I was five. But now, after 13 years, I think I can finally say I understand. So I stand here tonight trying to elaborate on my father's advice. Let's begin with question one. What is the purpose of life? It was my freshman year, and I was sitting in Ms. Elwood's freshman focus class. The bell work of the morning was to write down all your dreams. When class started, Ms. Elwood asked us to raise our hands if we ever saw ourselves fulfilling these dreams. Just about everyone raised their hands, and that's when Ms. Elwood said, well, I'm here today to tell you dreams do not come true. This was somewhat shocking to hear since I've never had a teacher be so blunt with me before. But then she proceeded on to say, dreams don't come true, goals do. It was the freshman focus class that taught me that in life we don't go out and just find ourselves, we create ourselves through hard work and dedication. In life, there is no purpose. I have no expectations. I wasn't put on earth to do anything or please anybody, and therefore I can do and be whoever I want. This leads me on to question two. What is the secret to life? For those of you who don't know, y equals f of x is a formula used in algebra saying for every input, we get an equal output. It was Mr. Brock who helped me understand this concept. Mr. Brock was my AP biology teacher. And let me tell you, AP biology was the toughest class I have taken at Williamsfield. The notes were so long and boring, Mr. Brock would just give us candy to keep us awake. The labs were so relentless, he would bring us donuts to try to brighten our day. And I swear the tasks were written in a foreign language. But at the end of the day, I can definitely say I learned mitosis divides the chromosomes in a cell's nucleus. Hardy Weinberg principle states that allele and genotype frequencies in a population will remain constant from generation to generation in the absence of an evolutionary influence. And most importantly, I learned a peanut is actually a fruit. <laughs> that was one thing Mr. Brock was great at. He could always take a negative and turn it into a positive. Mr. Brock showed me when I'm not happy with a situation, it is up to me and me alone to change what I, I am doing in order to get a better outcome. This leads me on to question three. What's the most important thing in life? Going into high school, it was me and my three friends, Cheyenne, Mia, and Jamie. We were so close back in the eighth grade, and even though Jamie and Nia were going to Higley High School, and Cheyenne and I were going to Williamsfield, we had these images in our heads of how high school would, or what high school would be like and how it would change us, and how through it all we would stick together. That summer, there was an unfortunate turn of events. At the age of 14, Jamie was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and for those of you who speak English, that's cancer found in her throat. Every day was spent in the hospital from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., watching, experiencing, and dreading the pain cancer had brought to us all. Still to this day, the most horrorsome and upsetting sound to ever meet my ears would be listening to everyone sing happy birthday inside the walls of a hospital, 
because the entire meaning changes. I was 14 years old, and while others my age were worried about finding the right outfit for the first day of school, I was wondering how much more cancer would take away from me. Everything I thought I knew, all the plans we had made, were torn apart. That's the weird thing about life. There are triumphs and failures, heartbreaks and thrills. At some point, we all hit rock bottom, and only some will be able to rise again. Life is a mess, and most people will spend their entire life trying to clean it up. Only a few of the crazy ones will actually just let the mess be. But what makes each day worth every second is knowing people you love and those who love you are surrounding you every second of the day. So now I've been told the best way to end a graduation speech is from a quote found in Polonius's monologue in Shakespeare's play Hamlet. But if there's one thing Mr. Shields taught me is I hate Shakespeare. So I decided to pick one of my favorite quotes from a man I know has affected everyone here today. His name is Steve Jobs. He said, here's to the crazy ones, the mitfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see them as genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.